Okay, Brother Kadash, want to give our praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem and Kadash. Gonna call this when the lights go out. Got some entertainment. Gonna have you watch this video. It's called Blackout. But first, I want to get this precept and then I'm gonna play the video for you. This is Second Ezra, chapter sixteen, straight to the point. Right, um, um, verse thirty-seven. Behold, the plagues draw thy and are not slack. Right. It says, as a woman with child in the ninth month, bringing forth her son. With two or three hours of her birth, great pains could pass her womb, which pains when the child coming forth, they slack not a moment. So it's the same thing what you're seeing on earth right now, even with these blackouts and these, you know, there's being rumors about rolling blackouts and then full blackouts and EMP attacks, all type of stuff, man, which is going to cause great pains upon the earth. Just like when a, a woman's going to have the child, just like when the Lord's on his way back. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and those evils be as pilgrims upon earth. Book of Eli, right? Um, it says, He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose, right? Because Man, shit, you buying gas, you losing, right? Because the prices are double of what they used to be. And same thing with all type of foods and different merchandise and homes and cars and all that. It says, he that occupy uh, merchandise as he that has no profit by it. And he that buildeth as he that should not dwell therein. He that soweth as he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vine or as he... That shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they shall get no children. And they that marry not as the uh, widowers. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. You know, um, a lot of truck drivers are laboring. They're going to work and they're over the road. But they ain't making no money because one of their biggest expenses if you're an owner operator is diesel gas. So all the money you're making, you're having to spend it on your gas and the rates for all the loads are way low. So they're not making as much money. So they're laboring, but it's like they're laboring in vain because all that laboring, going to work, putting in those extra hours, it's not going to get you salvation. It says for strangers to reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses and take their children captives for in captivity and famine, they shall get children and this is what you're about to see and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery and more they that deck their cities their houses their possessions and their own person the more will i be angry with them for their sin Say the lord right and this is what you're about to see upon the earth and this is a video some little entertainment of blackout and this is going into the whole blackout the electric grid and everything going out so check this out seventh floor. Windows on the World Restaurant was one of the most magical places on earth, not just in New York City. On a clear day, you could see 90 miles, planes flying below you. And 9.30, anybody in the restaurant business will tell you, is crunch time. I was walking the floor, and all of a sudden, I look to my right, and Brooklyn is not there anymore. Okay, it's just, where did Brooklyn go? And then I, I quickly glance over, Queens is gone. It's blackout, there's, no, there's no, no lights whatsoever. And as soon as I get up to the window, we're overlooking Manhattan, downtown Manhattan, whoosh, lights go out for us. New York City is a vertical city. There are people in apartment houses that are 10 stories high. They don't have any water. They have no lights. And there is a sense of urgency. I stopped the car. 
and there was about four or five hundred people in that park. And I told my partner, I said, we're not going down there. Let's get out of here. It wasn't just nighttime. It was total darkness. Everybody was kind of moving in groups. I'm sure they were scared, too. You know, because you don't know who's coming at you. It was like things had reached this boiling point. Once the lights went out, all hell broke loose. He said once the lights went out, all hell broke loose. So imagine like a week or a couple months or a month or whatever with no lights or no electricity. Especially in today's age where people are even more dependent on those things. And, and did you see that? What are people doing? They're stealing things. What did, what did we just read in 2nd Address 16? You read about it in 2nd Address 15. People spoiling goods. It's like an orgy of violence, arson, and insanity. How do you explain that social phenomenon? Fire. Hot and humid, high in the daytime, up near 100 overnight, lows down to around 80. A lot of fingers crossed with a continued heat wave. July 13, 1977. I was working my last 4 to 12 in a set of 5. It was a beastly hot day. I distinctly remember it was horribly hot. The city's in the midst of a heat wave were routinely hitting 100, above 100. Around 6 o'clock, I headed home. I got home early enough that I got in the pool with the kids. Somewhere around 8 o'clock, it was clear that thunderstorms were going to move in. So we all got out. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect for all of Westchester counties in New York. Now, these storms can produce wind gusts 50 miles an hour and more lightning, so be advised whatever precautions seem advisable. My daughter was brushing her teeth and looked out the bathroom window and said, what's wrong with the sky, Dad? It looks strange. I said, yeah, it's because of all the light. There's so much of it just stays lit. That evening, there was a lightning strike on a power line in Westchester County. The line went out. And the demand starts to increase on some of the surrounding lines. And the Lord did that. The Lord did that, man. Just, just, just to warn them, just to test. I mean, matter of fact, it speaks about it right here in back in Second Address, um, sixteen verse twenty. No, verse nineteen. Behold, famines and plague, tribulations, and anguish are sent as scourges for amendments. So that was sent as a scourge for an amendment when the Lord did that and took out the grid with just a lightning strike. Just for a period of time, but it wasn't the end yet. It says, but for all these things, they should not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. See, but they wasn't mindful of the scourges when this blackout happened. Nobody remembered that. I have to, we have to post a video, which another brother posted this video and I found it. And now I'm doing a lesson on it too, to, to remind people of it. And they didn't turn from their wickedness when that happened. They continued to be wicked and even more wicked. Behold, um, victuals should be so good cheap upon the earth that they should think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sorry, famine, and great confusion. This sort of essentially sets off a kind of chain reaction, a sort of a domino effect, where another line suddenly has too much power and it has to be shut down. And then another line is, is overextended, and it has to be shut down. Everyone's using a lot of power because they're all running air conditioners. And before you know it, the city is struggling to get enough power into the five boroughs. I got a call, maybe a little bit after nine, asking me to call the system operator. I called in and finally said, there's no other choice. The only alternative was to disconnect customers. 
you know, you're going to lose the whole thing. Yeah, tell him it's a, it's a dire emergency if he give us any more to give it to him. Right. It is one man who is in charge of bringing all of this power in. You have people telling him, yelling at him, you have to shut down some of these lines. You have to do it or the city's going to lose power. Bill, I hate to bother you, but you better shut about 400 megawatts a load or you're going to lose everything down there. Yeah. I am trying to. Anyone who's ever flown into New York City at night, who's ever been in New York City at night, there are lights everywhere. It's a beautiful image, really, in a way. The city that never sleeps, the city where the lights are always on. with my friends and you can still play at night because there was a lot of lampposts around Jefferson Park but then all of a sudden they started going out one by one like, and uh, we're like wow what's happening that night I'm on the third floor windows open it was very hot so people were outside and suddenly, the TV went off. The light went off. All of a sudden, the noise outside in the street quickly stopped for a second. And suddenly, you heard a <sighs> Because everybody at the same time realized something had happened. I was up in the office. I was catching up on some paperwork. And uh, having a cup of coffee, and the lights dimmed. The emergency generator roared on, and somebody shouted, blackout, you know? One of the things about Windows on the world right from the very beginning was its dress code. You had to have a jacket and tie. The general manager said to me, you can tell people they can take their jackets off. Take their jackets off, you know? OK, you can take your jackets off. Next thing, the ties are coming off. Next thing, you know, people loosening their shirts. The general manager got up and immediately spoke. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's getting champagne. I'm gonna leave it there. It's just, you know, just a little insight, you know, on what's on what's coming, you know, and how you could kind of feel it just through watching the video of how eerie, you know, and how on edge everybody was, you know, and concerned everybody was. So imagine today. You've seen the fires, you've seen people stealing goods and going crazy. So imagine what's about to happen on Earth today or if there is a blackout, which, you know, we have yet to see. You know, we got to see if that's one of the things that's that's going to come here pretty soon. You know, they're talking about it. So with that, I'm going to say salvation to the U.S. Shalom.